JHK here for the All Star, and join me right now. He's on the bike, Canadian lightweight prospect, Michael Dufort. Michael, thank you so much for the time. How are you living? I'm fucking fine, man. Uh, I'm good. I can't wait to fight in three weeks. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, let's go back to your last fight. You returned after almost exactly two years of not fighting at all. You probably would continue to train and continue to stay ready. How did you feel in that fight? You know, it only lasted two minutes. I mean, I felt great. Um, it's funny because I knew, I knew I was going to win, but I just didn't know how, but man, uh, I should have known it was the guillotine. My, my guillotine is that good. Um, uh, probably that the next fight will finish the same way. Pretty fast, pretty quick, man. Uh, cause when I see the opportunity to finish my opponent, I always take it and it's fast. It didn't seem like you had any kind of ring rust in that fight because you finished the fight so quick. But when you first stepped in, was there a, a different kind of nerves? No, it was good, seriously. Uh, it was my first international fight. So I didn't have to sell tickets like when, when I fight at my, in my hometown. Um, so, so it's easier. Less pressure on the fighter so the fighter can fight the better man. The fighter can fight with no stress and it's so easy to fight when... Man, you get booed before the fight, and you're like, oh, yeah, I like that. <laughs> oh, you like playing the enemy. Yeah, I like that. I like being the bad guy. So so much easier. Yeah, how, how much pressure is it to have to sell fights, or not sell fights, sell tickets leading up to a fight? It must, you know, you got to focus on your training and everything else, your diet. And then on top of that, the tickets must be a, a big burden. Man, it's a full-time job, seriously. Like I train like 35 hours a week. Um, I have to plan, uh, I have to do posts to sell tickets. I have to see people to sell tickets. Uh, man, at the end of the week, I have no time for myself. So it, it's a lot of pressure on the fighter and the promoter is always like, hey, you should sell more tickets, sell more tickets, sell more tickets. Man, it, it's a full-time job. Seriously, it's hard. But uh, it, it's better for the pay, for the paycheck. So... We do it. Are you are you selling tickets for this upcoming fight at Samurai MMA One? Yep, I'm selling tickets, but yeah, I'm selling tickets. So, like I say, it's a lot of job, a lot of jo uh, a lot of job because uh, like there there are plenty of people that want tickets, and because of the, of COVID, it's a uh, it's a little little space, so their the tickets are expensive, and people are like, oh yeah, I'm gonna take tickets from. I really don't take it. it's a full time job, like I say. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, before we talk more about your fight and your opponent, I want to rewind back to the start of your pro career. You know, you you started off with two straight losses. This sport is the toughest sport in the world. You know, when you start off on a losing streak, you can get discouraged. You could kind of get into your mind too deep. How did you break out of that? And it was hard. Seriously, you, you question yourself. But, uh, and if you're able to come back from two losses, and man, you're the strongest motherfucker because it's so hard. So, man, when you come back from two losses like I did, and with eight of the last ne next something, like, I'm proud of myself. I know if I would, uh, if I would have won the, the, the first fight, I wouldn't be the same person, same fighter. So... Man, that that's an obstacle, but uh, I'm glad uh, I'm glad I'm the one uh, that at that obstacle. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, after that, like you mentioned, you've finished almost every opponent that you've beaten, and they all have similar records as you. You know, what I mean, sometimes you see records and you and you look at guys that you know the he has faced, and their records are you know like debuting. Mm -hmm. But you're, you're the guys that you fought are very similar. Especially, man, they, they book like art fights, always art fights. So, you know, if you if you win your fight in TKO, you know you're leg you're a legit fighter. Because, man, it, it's a hard sport, like you say. There's a loser, there's a winner, and it's hard to be on the winner side uh, as often as I did in my last nine fight. The Je Jesse Ronson fight, man, split decision. 
How did that transform you? Because I feel like you could learn more from that fight than some of your wins. Uh, yeah, man, it, it was a nice experience. Like, there's not a lot of people that go fight around with a guy like Jess Ronson, UFC fighter. Um, it it gave the experience. My, my next fight, I'll fight um, Kyle Pripolek, and I don't think he has a, he has been in a, in a five round fight yet. So I'll be that. I'll have that advantage, even if you have, if if you have more fight than me. But man, I'm ready for the test. And like you say, Jess Ronson gives me gives me so much experience. That fight was awesome. Ooh, we had a crazy fight, split decision, like you say. Um, was good for me. For me, like my two first fight, two losses. It was good experience for fight. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, you returned from two years away from competition and you got a win, a solid win. Do you feel like you've picked up the momentum again with your with your career? Yeah, I never stopped. Um, like uh, all, all the year I was in, uh, in Olivier Aubin-Merci at training camp. He fought two, twice for PFL this year. And man, we went in a... Uh, and we say... Um, we went in the Atlantic City for two weeks for training. Um, I fought a left. He's a lefty, so I trained with a lefty for for a years, and now I'm fighting another lefty. My last my last fight was a lefty. Jess Ronson was a lefty, so man, I'm ready for every fucking lefty there is. <laughs> for sure. Now uh, coming up, man, November nineteenth, main event. Kyle Pe- uh, Preperlek, he is a UFC veteran, a big test for you. You said that he has never went five rounds. That means you d- you you plan on going into the championship rounds with him? No, nah, I plan on... My plan is always to finish a fight. I- I'm a finisher. I see the, the opportunity when they, there there is. And I plan to put so much pressure in the first round that he's going to do a mistake and I'll capitalize. What do you think of him and his style and his his approach to fighting? He has a funny style. He he, he has a weird style. He, his hook is good. His left hand is good. Um, I'm going to pressure him. That that's that's how I plan to fight. Um, I know he has some um, some uh, some. He he's not that great on uh, defending the takedown. So I plan on bringing in, bringing him in my world. So I plan on doing some damage on the ground, on the on the on the feet, and take him down. Take him down. Then I'm he's in deep water. Do you look at him as as your ticket to the to the bigger promotions, to the bigger organizations? Let's say the UFCs, the Bellators, the PFLs. Yeah. Um, all I want right now is UFC. Um, fully, fully, I see the UFC in my. In my in my soup, man. I, I'm so ready. I'm so. I know I I deserve to be a UFC rooster, UFC fighter. Um, I'm just waiting for the call. So yeah, yeah. I think that's the fight that will bring that that call. Yeah, and uh, it seems like the UFC is starting to sign more Canadian fighters as of late. So th- I think the eyes are on you in this fight because it's a main event. It's a UFC veteran. They're looking for prospects. You fit the bill. Yeah, I fit it. Uh, UFC plan on maybe plan on coming in uh, Canada in February, 2022. So man, I would be ready for February no matter what. Uh, I'll finish that guy and then hopefully I'll get the call. Like I say. Yeah, and and you've been wrecking guys. What is your prediction? Another car crash? Another early finish? Yeah, I'm always I'm always a predicting early finish. Like you you see my record. My record is. First round finish, second round finish. There, there's not a lot of people that go in the first round with me, so I'll, I'll, I'll continue to put pressure and try to finish the guy in the first. And this promotion, Samurai, is it? Is it? This is their first official event, right? And you're the headliner. Yep, it's their first event. Um, they plan on coming on on being the the best the best organization in Canada. So man, um, they're pretty cool. They treat us pretty great. So, man, best, best of luck to, to this guy. 
Definitely, and and you being the first main event of in the history of the promotion, it's it says a lot. Yeah, it's very nice. It's very cool. Like you say, it says a lot. Um, th there's like a lot of confidence in the promoter and in, in me, and that that's that's warm. That that that's pretty nice. I wanted to pick your brain about a topic, right? In in Kansas, in the U.S., they they have open scoring, and recently Colorado. They adopted open scoring, and they're going to use it starting in 2022. What is your take on open scoring? Do you like it? Do you not like it? What do you think is going to be the impact of it? I really like it because you never know how a judge judge a fight. So it's hard for the fighter sometimes. Sometimes you think because of your wrestling, you take him down once, you win the, the, the round. But you don't know. Sometimes they, they'll give more more credit to a, a good punch and a takedown. Sometimes it's a kick. Sometimes it's it's ground control. Sometimes it's you never know how a judge is gonna judge the fight. So if you're wrestling, it's not a winning round, man. You, you got to do something else. So you can adjust yourself. The uh, the fighter IQ will be will be good. The fight the, the IQ from the coaches will be will be better. So that that's pretty good. I, I like that. I like so that. So you think it will elevate the sport? Yeah. Like the fighters will be better, the coaches will improve off of this open square? The fighter will try more too. Because uh, let, let's say uh, Costa in the fifth round, he, he knew he had lost, but if it was closer like uh, as a fight, man, he would have tried everything in the fifth round to, to, to knock Vittori out. He, he knew he, he's losing the round. But what's what may be what may suck is when you're two round two round uh, at zero and, and you start running away that 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 could suck but hopefully it will not happen yeah well you know they might have to put in a penalty for running away right yeah that's true yeah you can mm -hmm. take a take a point half yeah definitely that's true yeah Pretty stalling nice. stalling yeah for sure well november 19th man you're back in action main event samurai mma one Montreal, Canada. Michael, thank you so much for the time. Get the win, get the finish, get signed. That's the goal. My man, thank you. Very, very nice to... Th thanks to welcome me. That, that's pretty nice.